Hi everyone, welcome again to Super Heuristics. You would know that the first concept to learn in predictive analytics for marketing analytics has to be regression. Therefore, in this video, I will be sharing with you the intuition and theory behind linear regression, which will help you understand this concept. So let's go for it. Hi everyone, I am Darpan from Super Heuristics. I am a marketing strategist and a blogger. And on my blog, you can go and see the best resources to learn analytics, be it the best online courses, the best ebooks, or the best podcasts. You will be able to start off right away. Now, firstly, we need to understand that what exactly are we speaking about and where is it fitting in the entire predictive analytics framework? So as I've already shared with you that predictive analytics is about learning machine learning and it is only through machine learning that you can solve a lot of complex predictive problems for your marketing analytics. Further, in another video of mine, I've shared with you that machine learning algorithms are primarily of two kinds. However, some would say that no, they are of four kinds, which also includes semi-supervised learning and reinforcement learning. However, for a lot of the marketing analytics problems which we will solve, you would only need to stick to supervised and unsupervised algorithms. So let's understand that what exactly are supervised and unsupervised algorithms. So simply supervised algorithms are when you share with your algorithm the previous data in which you share not just the inputs but also the outputs so for example i want to know that how much would be my sales in quarter three for that i share with this algorithm the ad expenditures which will be my input and the sales which is my output obviously for the last 12 quarters so i've shared this now the objective of this algorithm is that that from this data it should be able to unearth some kind of a pattern through which it can help me understand that how much sales will i do in quarter three if my ad expenditure is x so now i will just go ahead and i will share with the algorithm that my my ad expenditure is equal to say 500 or uh, it's uh, 50 CR uh, 50 crores and I want you to share with me how much is going to be uh, my sales so through this it will be able to share that this is the most simplistic understanding of what exactly a supervised algorithm is and now from that you would have obviously understood that what exactly is unsupervised algorithm in unsupervised algorithm I am still sharing the previous data however I am not sharing any output i am only sharing inputs so in this algorithm basically the algorithm's objective is that it needs to find a pattern within all of the data and it should somehow come out with a logic which explains the data that is it now obviously in this video i will be focusing on supervised algorithms and hence i would be explaining you more about it and we will surely speak about the unsupervised algorithms in some of my future videos now within supervised algorithms we have basically two categories of algorithms one is the regression whereas the other is classification and we know that in this video we are specifically speaking about regression and that too about linear regression however i'll still explain you these two so now if you see these examples you will understand the basic difference between the two so in supervised algorithms in regression our output variable is always a continuous variable a continuous variable variable means that its value can be anything from zero to infinity it can be anything it can be in points it can be a whole number and like that whereas in classification our output variable is a discrete variable which means that it can hold only a specific number of values it could be only two values or three values or four so we have this example in front of us wherein we are saying that if i have shared my advertisement expenditures i want to know how much sales i'll make now Obviously, we know that sales can be anything. Sales can be 1 crores, 1.5 crores, 3.51 crores. It could be anything. Hence, we know that here sales is basically a continuous variable, isn't it? Now, I'll share with you one example for classification. Suppose you work at a bank and you have a lot of 
details of a lot of your historic customers and you know that out of them which ones did take up a loan and which ones did not take a loan and from this you want the algorithm to be able to predict that if i share the details of a new prospect will the algo be able to share with me whether he'll enroll for a loan or not and in this case if you understand what exactly is your output you know that your output can only be a yes or no that yes he will take a loan or no he will not take a loan what exactly it means it means that your output is discrete it can only have two levels so hence these kind of marketing challenges are under classification algorithms so now i'll help you build an intuition for what exactly is linear regression so i have in front of me a sample sales data i have the quarters i have the ad expenditure and i have uh, the sales and all of this i will feed into my supervised learning algorithm so mind you i am sharing sharing with him the input this is the input as well as the output so now what i would want the algorithm to do is that if suppose for the quarter number 13 i share with him or i share with the algorithm that my ad expenditure is say 52 then how much is going to be my sales so here the job of the algorithm is to be able to find a generalization from all of this historical data so that it can predict any future values now how would this algorithm go go ahead and do that so the first thing which i do is that i go ahead and i plot this on a scatter plot so here i have my ad expenditure on the x axis and my sales on the y axis so if you see say for example for quarter 4 this is my uh, quarter 4 i can see that my ad expenditure is equal to 39 which by the way i'm seeing from here and my sales accordingly is some 831 i can see it okay now the job of this algorithm is that if suppose i share with this algorithm that how much sales will i make if my ad expenditure is 51 it should be able to share with me a value which is at y now in this case what exactly the algorithm is doing is that it is finding a straight line which best explains all of these quarters so what exactly the algorithm is up to is that it is finding a straight line which best explains all of these points and now if i ask this algorithm that how much will be the sales at the ad expenditure of 51 it will just be able to do this and will be able to share with me the exact value of sales so finally if i have to give you a one line explanation of what this entire thing is or what exactly is linear regression then that one statement has to be that it is the pursuit of finding this linear line which best explains the model this thing is our linear regression problem now allow me to go back to class 10th you would have learned in class 10th that the equation for a straight line like this with this as the y axis and the x axis obviously and this intercept being c you would know this thing that the equation of this straight line is y is equal to mx plus c and don't you think that the line which i just now showed you is exactly the same as this which means that the objective of this algorithm or in fact i should say that this entire algorithm is basically this one equation we need to find this equation for our historic data where x is the input and y is the output such that when we enter a new x then we can have a new y which means that when we enter a new ad expenditure we can find out the value of sales so effectively if i have to give you the final equation of this then it has to be y hat is equal to beta not plus beta 1 plus x and now if i have to state this same equation for the problem which i had shared then this equation will be that the predicted value of sales is equal to beta not plus beta 1 into ad expenditure so if you see overall the job of this algorithm is to find this correct equation such that if i enter the x value which is the ad expenditure it can share with me the y value now you would ask me that what exactly is this y hat 
and why do we have a y hat and what exactly is this what exactly is this so i'll just explain it to you and for this i would advise you to go to my blog and read my article on this i have explained it to you in great detail over there so instead of saying this y we are saying this as y hat because y is the actual value of sales whereas y hat is the predicted value of sales so in order to have that sanctity we are just specifying it with a hat that's it now if you were to ask me about that what exactly are these two then these two are called model parameters and only when you adjust these two you would find that equation which will fit your pattern correctly so if you see linear regression is basically about finding this equation and when i'm saying finding this equation all you need to find all the algorithm has to find are these two values because ad expenditure and sales we are already sharing it with the algorithm so finally if you completely understand this again i'm saying this that all your algorithm is up to is that from these two values which you've shared with the algorithm it is finding out these two ideal values and once it has found out these values then it will create your equation which will help you find the predicted sales moving on so i've just made this entire thing slightly more interesting so as of now we had been speaking about this data wherein we had the ad expenditure and the sales and we knew that in this case the equation is y hat is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 which effectively is again sales is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 into ad expenditure here we had only one independent variable this variable this variable this ad expenditure is your independent variable whereas your sales is always your dependent variable now what will happen if suppose instead of just the ad expenditure i am also sharing that how much you spent on the sales promotions so when i've shared with you an additional variable what effectively is happening is that this equation effectively now is y hat is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x2 because now we also have another x variable which is another input so if i have to say it again then it is sales is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 into ad expenditure plus beta 2 into sales promotion expenditure and if you see in both of these equation the story is still the same the story is that the algorithm still has to find out these ideal values that's it which means that even if we keep on increasing our independent variables we can still create a linear model for it and we will just keep on adding more model parameters that's it and one more thing which you need to completely understand over here is that why do we say that it is linear so the layman answer to it is that because this line is basically a straight line and hence it's called linear so the more specific answer for this thing is that because in this equation y hat beta naught plus beta 1 plus x1 we are not using any higher powers of x so had this equation been y hat is equal to beta naught plus x1 plus beta 2 x1 square then it would no longer be a linear model so yes i just had to explain you uh, this one small uh, nuance as well and by the way if we do have an equation which has a x squared or a x cube or a x to the power 4 then this kind of uh, model is called as polynomial regression which i'll surely be speaking about in my future videos and now the last thing which I'll explain you, which is a very important thing to know. In fact, I will have a one complete video on this topic is that how would you know that this line which you have, which is also the model, how do you know that this is accurate enough? So why are we saying that only this line is the most accurate one and not a line which is like this one maybe or a line which is like this one? how do we understand that our model is accurate so the way we understand that is through something called the rss which is the root sum of squares 
Now, what exactly is the root sum of squares? It is the root sum of squares of errors. So for example, here we can see that for this ad expenditure, the actual sales value, the actual sales, which means the Y is here this much. This is my Y, which is actual sales. However, if I were to follow this equation, then for this ad expenditure, it would have stated that my sales is actually this much and it is the Y hat which is the predicted sales. Hence, we know that somehow there is a gap, there is a error and this error is equal to Y minus Y hat. Same way, if suppose you take another example, you, you take the example of this one, wherein for this ad expenditure, the actual sales value is say Y1. But if we were to see our model, then it would say to us that no, the sales would actually be Y1 hat. Now we know that in this case, the error one is equal to y1 minus y1 hat so we had the data for 12 such quarters and we know that for all of them if we find out these errors e e1 e2 e3 till e12 so from here we have our e e1 e2 till say till e12 in our case and it could be till en then what we do is that for all of these we go ahead and we square them now why do we square them the concept is simple because here in this case in case of e we know that e will be positive however here in case of e1 we can see that here e will not be positive in fact it will be negative hence to neutralize the effect of negativity we just square all of these values so we have all of them squared over here and then just try and understand this wording here uh, we are saying that first we will do the squares then we will do the sum and then we will do the root so the sum of squares sum of squares is basically e plus e1 square plus e2 square so on which effectively is summation of e here we have the sum of squares and when we do the root sum of squares which is the rs then it is basically the root of the sum of squares. So this effectively helps us understand that how effective and how accurate is our entire model. However, what if I share with you that RSS is not the ideal way to find out the accuracy of your entire model. It is not the ideal way. In fact, the ideal ways to do these are something which are called RSME or simply the R square. Now, what exactly is RSME and what exactly is R square? is something which I'll be sharing with you in my next video. So we are at the end of this and I would urge you to go to my blog and read this complete article which will explain you this entire thing which I've explained over here in a lot more detail. So please go ahead and go to my blog. And finally, the most interesting part of the video is that I want to know your opinion on this fact that do you think that the linear regression can be inaccurate or I should just frame it as can it be grossly inaccurate? If yes, then why and in what circumstances and by the way I've already shared a bit of hint with you already in this video so you must go ahead and watch this video again or probably the advisable way is to go ahead on my blog and read the entire article and probably you will be able to find this answer and another hint I have an elaborate article speaking about why linear regression can be completely inaccurate so just go ahead share your opinions and the best opinion opinions will feature on my blog. Thank you so much.